Welcome. Thanks for joining the Advanced Analytics Front End Tutorial. This is a quick overview of the front end of Advanced Analytics. Um, Advanced Analytics is a sourcing measurement tool. So as you source your candidates um, and they land on your career site, so uh, jobsyourdomain.com or careersyourdomain.com, uh, as they land on those pages, it will actually pick up the source information of those candidates, meaning what sites did they come from. Um, so if you're doing a lot of sourcing at Indeed or LinkedIn, you can track that within the advanced analytics tool. Um, appropriately permissioned users can access advanced analytics uh, by going into the recruiting panel and then selecting advanced analytics at the top. If you do not see advanced analytics at the top, it's possible that you are lacking an important permission. And please go take a look at the implementation guide and uh, review the issue further. Once you're in advanced analytics, we have three main areas. First, we have the browser tab at the top. Uh, we have the detail query tool and we have the applicant conversion report. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the browser tends to be the uh, most used option in advanced analytics. The other two reports are very nice as well. Um, they're just another way of looking at the same data. So let's take a look at the report on the browse tab. Uh, so at the top here, we have the time period. We can select from various you know, preset time periods, or we can select something more custom uh, if we wanted to. In this case, uh, I'm going to leave it as rolling year. My data is pretty sparse as it is, so we'll we'll need all, everything we can get at this point. Uh, then down below, we actually have the drill path. The drill path is how we control all of our filters and we look at all of our data using this option here. Uh, at the top, we have some sourcing information, source type, source engine, and campaign tag. The source type, that's the category of source. Uh, the source engine, those are individual sources that all roll up into a source type. And then we have campaign tags, and those campaign tags can be built out using various tagging tools, uh, such as the market job tab um, in success factors. Then we have some job requisition data, such as category, department, job title, uh, job country, job city, uh, these types of of uh, job requisition data. Now it's very valuable to have this option in advanced analytics because you can actually filter your data based on various aspects of the job requisition. So instead of saying, you know, where do we do our best recruiting? We can actually get more granular than that. We can move into where do we recruit our best software engineers or um, where do we typically have the best quality candidates uh, for jobs in Minneapolis, Minnesota? These are the types of questions that we seek to answer in advanced analytics. So um, for that second option where I said, where do we get our most candidates for in Minneapolis, Minnesota? What I would actually do is I would then come into uh, Job City to find Minneapolis. I'm actually not sure if we actually have a Minneapolis. OK, let's say Chicago instead. Uh, we come into Job City and find Chicago. And now I'll select Chicago from the drill from the uh, list of available options, and I'm going to select source engine. And that will show me all of the sources that have brought me applicants for job cities of Chicago. So this is how you can filter in advanced analytics. You can use the, the drill path in that manner. Uh, on the right, we have various columns, visits, subscribes, apply starts, and visit conversion. These measures all come from the recruiting marketing platform, which is your career site, jobs.yourname.com. Um, right, so that's your recruiting marketing platform and these measures come from there. Then uh, the apply completes, qualifieds, interviews, offers made and hires. Those actually come from status mappings between RCM, recruiting management, and advanced analytics. So during implementation, you may have gone through a process where you mapped uh, various applicant statuses, such as new application and interview and offer made, these things, and you map them into the advanced analytics statuses here that I'm showing you now. And by doing that, you can actually get a funnel where you can see You'll probably see the largest amount of applications for any one rec 
in the apply completes column. And as you move into more and more qualified statuses, such as qualified, interviewed, offer made, and hired, it will reduce over time in each different step. So you'll get kind of a funnel effect as you move down the line. And the idea is that we're not really looking at just the visits. Sure, visits are great. Uh, apply completes, those are great. That's what we wanna see. Um, but it's also really nice to see where are we getting qualified candidates from? What sources are driving our qualified candidates rather than just our visits? Um, so that's kind of the front end of the browse tab and that's how you tend to use it. Uh, the detail query tool allows you to drill straight into the details. So back on the browse tab here, if I want to, I can click into this detail and I can actually see this specific user. Um, I did that because there was one record in the apply starts column. I clicked on that one record and now I can see the underlying details that make up that one. So you can see it's an apply start on this job by this person, okay? So that's a detail and you can query the details directly. You don't actually need to go through the browse tab if you don't want to by using this detail query tool. So the same way you would set up the time period, you would set up the filters. In this case, I would do job city, equals to Chicago. And then I'm gonna add a plus sign here and I'm going to do source engine. And I think it was something like fire, first firebird employee referral, that one, right? And now we'll do apply started. And when I generate this report, I should actually get the same result. Yep, okay. So that's how you can query the details directly through the detail query tool. It's uh, essentially the same thing as the browse tab, but you don't need to get to um, all of, you don't need to go through all of the steps to get there. You can just query directly to get the results. Uh, finally, we do have the applicant conversion report. The applicant conversion report uh, is essentially the same thing as this column here, applicant completion conversion. So what will happen is you get this field, applicant completion conversion, based on the number of apply starts and apply completes. It's comparing the two. So if I had one apply start and one apply complete, I would have 100% applicant completion conversion. Um, applicant conversion report gives you a drop off, which would essentially be the opposite of your applicant conversion report. So before I said, if I had one apply start and one apply complete, it would give me 100%. I actually don't have any apply completes, it looks like. So I'm having a 100% drop off. Uh, so it gives you your drop off based on different groupings. Uh, you can look at source type or you can look at different aspects of the job requisition. And then it will give you apply starts only, apply conversions or apply completes only. Apply starts only, those are the people that do not complete the application. They abandon it midway through. Uh, these are the true drop offs. Apply conversions, these are the people that both complete the or both start the application and complete it, and then apply completes only. These are people that actually bypass uh, recruiting marketing and they go apply directly to the ATS. Um, so they actually don't have an apply start matching up with their apply complete. Um, so the apply starts only is kind of a way of measuring your drop off percentage or your apply completion percentage uh, as well. Okay, so those are the three areas of advanced analytics. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Um, thank you for your time.